We spent our entire first unit talking about kinematics, the motion, without paying any attention to what caused that motion. This unit, obviously, already we're already started studying forces, the things that cause the motion itself. We're still going to look at the motion, but we're going to focus more on what causes the motion, i.e., the forces. We defined a couple of terms over the last couple of days. First one was mass. Do you guys remember what the difference between mass and volume was? Mass is the the amount of matter that something possesses, right? The amount of matter that something possesses. The symbol for mass is going to be an M, and the units for mass would be, careful, don't get it mixed up with chemistry, units for mass are? Kilograms. Yep, kilograms, good. And mass is going to be a what, a vector or a scalar? It's a scalar, yeah, there's no direction associated with mass. We know that on two fronts. One, if you add a self to the end of it, 25 kilograms to the self, doesn't make any sense. So mass has got to be a scalar. Secondly, there's no vector sign over top of the M, so if there's no vector sign, it's got to be a scalar. Now, the other term was volume, not the amount of matter that something has, but rather it's the amount of space that something takes up. The volume is V, capital V, and the units for volume would be what? Not meters. Liters, yes, liters. Or the other thing that we could use for volume would be meters cubed, good. And volume is going to be a scalar as well because, again, it doesn't make any sense to say, oh, I have a two-liter bottle of pop, two liters to the north. It doesn't make any sense. It's got to be a scalar. The other way you can determine that is to look at the symbol. It's a V without an arrow over it. It's got to be a scalar. Now, this is the important definition because this is what we're focusing on our entire unit, a force. Force is defined as, same thing as it was defined as back in grade six, uh, a push or a pull. Good. A push or a pull. And the symbol for force is F. The units for force are newtons. And force is a vector or a scalar. It's a vector quantity. We know that on two fronts. One, it makes sense to talk about 100 newtons to the south. Okay? It doesn't make sense to talk about 100 kilograms to the south. Also, we see the little half arrow over top of this F, which tells us that force is, in fact, a vector. Now, there's three things that a force can do, three things that a force can change. We're not talking about two of them being pu a push and a pull. Okay, that's the definition for force. What is it that a force can actually accomplish or do? What can it change? What's one of the things that a force can change? Yep. Yeah, it can change the velocity or it can change the speed of an object. It can cause an object to speed up. It can cause an object to slow down. It can cause an object that's at rest to start moving. It cannot cause an object that's moving to stop. Those are all changes in speeds. What's another one that it can do? Yeah, it can change, cause a change in direction as well. Sometimes you could actually lump those two things together, change in speed, change in direction, and say, oh, it causes acceleration. Because acceleration means that we either have a change in speed or we have a change in direction. Somebody else give me the third one that uh, a force can do. A force can change. Andrew? Yeah, it could cause a change in shape. It can deform an object. When a car crashes, the shape of it changes. It was the force that caused the shape of it to change. Now, the velocity or the speed also changes. The direction might change. Sometimes a force can cause one of those three things. Sometimes a force can cause two of those three things at the same time. And sometimes a force can cause all three of those things to happen at the same time. So a force is a push or a pull. It can either change the speed, the direction, or the shape. Another term, inertia. This goes to the first law that we talked about. Okay, inertia means the tendency of an object to... I heard somebody whispering it. Dylan, what's inertia? Tendency of an object to? Yeah, to maintain its current state of motion. In other words, we could say it's the tendency of an object to keep doing what it's doing. An object at rest will stay at rest, or at least it wants to. An object in motion wants to stay in motion. It's the tendency of an object to keep doing what it's doing now. Which leads us to Newton's first law. Newton's first law is the Newton's first law, or the law of keep doing whatever it's doing, says an object at rest will stay at rest. Nick, until? Until? Yeah, good. Not, it's not good enough just to say until a force acts on it. We have to say until an unbalanced force acts on it. 
We can have forces acting on it all we want. If they balance each other out, it's still not going to move. Okay, this desk is at rest right now. Evan, give the desk a push. Just a light push. Okay, the forces that I'm pushing on it with, the force that Evan pushes on it with, balance each other out. There's forces acting on it, but it remains at rest. It's not until, Evan, give it a push again. It's not until the force is unbalanced, until Evan's force is bigger or until my force is bigger, that it actually starts to move. So an object at rest will stay at rest until acted upon by an unbalanced force. Now the second part of it says an object in motion will do what? An object in motion will... Iana, what's an object in motion going to do? Good. It's going to continue in motion, straight line, constant speed. Remember me going around the turn when I was 17 driving the van? Okay, I continued in motion in a straight line at a constant speed until, until I hit a guardrail, until the unbalanced force acted on me. An object in motion will continue in motion in a straight line at a constant speed until acted upon by an unbalanced force. Now, in both of these cases, if the forces are balanced, we say that they're in a state of, starts with an E. They're in a state of equilibrium. Yeah, equilibrium means balanced forces. When all the forces acting on an object balance each other out, or when they're equal and opposite forces. When an object is in equilibrium, it's going to keep doing what it's doing. An object at rest is in equilibrium. The forces must balance. An object going at a constant speed is in equilibrium. The forces must balance. Now, yesterday, we went a little further. The day before, we had talked about, we could call it the law of keep doing what it's doing, or Newton's first law. Yesterday, we talked about Newton's second law, which is the law of change, if we want to think of it that way. We have an unbalanced force in Newton's second law, and that unbalanced force, or that net force, or that total force, the sum of all the forces, causes an object to accelerate. Takes us to Newton's second law. Again, the law of do something different. The law of accelerate. Newton's second law says... The acceleration of an object is directly proportional to and in the same direction as the net force acting upon it. Yeah, the net force acting upon it. Now, the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. That means that the more force you apply, the quicker it accelerates. And that should make sense, right? You guys know intuitively from the time you're three years old, the harder you push on something, the quicker it speeds up, the quicker it accelerates. You also know um, from a pretty young age, the heavier something is, the slower something's going to accelerate. You could have figured this out when you were five years old. Okay, the faster, the bigger the force you apply, the more it accelerates, the bigger the mass, the less it accelerates. We can state that mathematically as A is equal to F over M. Although we often see it in a rearranged form, F is equal to M times A. Remember, when I write this down, sometimes we put the subscript there, sometimes we don't. In the context of this equation, F always means the net force, whether you see a subscript there or not. Not individual forces, but the net force. Let's have a quick look at questions 6 and 7 now, which is what we have for homework on worksheet number 10. Both of these questions involve Newton's second law. Number six says a two kilogram object accelerates from two meters per second to five meters per second in a time of eight seconds. What's the net force acting on the object? We're going to say the mass is 2.00 kilograms. Anything else? Sure there is. There's other numbers here. What else have we got here, Jen? What else? Give me another given here. Yeah, is what? Good. We'll say VI is 2.0 meters per second. That means that VF is going to be 5.0 meters per second, right? My time interval is 8.0 seconds. I'm looking for the net force. If I'm looking for the net force, I only have one equation with force in it. So let's use it. Let's say F is equal to M times A. Mass is 2.00 kilograms. The acceleration, I don't know. So I've got to find that some other way. Ideas. Right now, how am I going to find the acceleration of that? Yeah. Be careful, though. You probably meant the right thing, 
But it's not velocity over time. It's delta velocity, change in velocity over time. That's important here because if we just say velocity, we might be tempted to say 5 over 8 or 2 over 8. It needs to be change in velocity, which is 5 minus 2 over 8 or 3 over 8 or 0 0.375 meters per second squared, or we could say 0 0.375 newtons per kilogram. We multiply 2 times 0 0.375. Oh, wait, should I have rounded that because I have two digits? Luke? No, don't round until your final answer, right? Leave it that way. 2 times 0 0.375 is 0 0.75. Now I've got to round it to two digits, 0 0.75 newtons. Remember, the 0 doesn't count as a digit. Only the 7 and the 5 here. Seven. What's the net force required to accelerate a 1,200-kilogram car from rest to 90 over a time of six seconds? This is a lot like the first question. Um, the mass is 1,200 kilograms. Tell me what VI is this time. Tell me what's VI this time. Good. Starts at rest, right? It's a little bit easier because of that, but a little bit harder because of VF. VF is 90 kilometers per hour, but we want to convert that to meters per second. How do you convert kilometers per hour to meters per second, Taryn? Don't worry about what the answer is, just how do you do it? The times what? Five, five, Almost. Another attack. Anybody? Yep. No, we're talking kilometers per hour to meters per second. Nick? 90 times 1,000 gives me meters. Right. And there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. So 90,000 meters in, a, in 90 kilometers and 3,600 seconds in an hour. So 90,000 divided by 3,600 gives me 25 meters per second. My time interval is six seconds. I'm looking for the net force again. Almost the same question here. M times A. Don't know what A is, so let's find it. Uh, a is delta V, not V, but delta V over delta T. 25 minus zero over a time interval of six seconds. That gives me 4.0 meters per second squared, which we sub into this equation, mass times that, 1,200 times 4.16667 equals 5.0. Two digits. This is this is two. This is four. This is three. Final answer is two digits. Five point zero newtons. I mean five point zero times ten to the three newtons. Okay, we had a request to go over number five, so we'll do that one as well. This is a 1,000 kilogram car accelerates from rest to 20 over a distance of 40, 400 meters. What's the net force required to do this? My mass is 1,000 kilograms. VI, same as the number seven, VI is zero meters per second. This time we don't have to worry about converting, just 20 meters per second for my final speed. And my distance is 400 meters. We're looking for the net force required to do this. So we're gonna say once again, F is equal to M times A. But we've got to find A, just like we have in the other two questions. This time it's not going to work to say delta V over delta T, though. Which of the group B equations do we want to use for this one? Which one seems to fit this one the best with the givens that we have? Can we? Right. Let's try that. VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD. So we're going to say we're solving for, solving for A here. Take the VI squared by subtracting. It's not attached. Okay, VF squared minus VI squared Oops. equals 2AD. 
And then we're going to take the 2D over by 2 and the D are multiplied by A. So we're going to take them both over by, what is it? By division, yeah. Take them both over by division. So we end up getting VF squared minus VI squared over 2 times D equals A. VF is 20, 20 squared minus 0 squared over 2 times 400. That's 20 squared is 400 divided by 800 is 0 0.500 meters per second squared. Then we take the 0.5, multiply it by the mass. Gives us 500. Uh, we should round that to two digits, actually. 5.0 times 10 to the 2 newtons. 5.0 times 10 to the 2 newtons.